What do you have for us today, Aaron? So I have some artifacts that belong I'm sorry, uh, it helps if I hold it up to my, my, my face hole here. So we have some artifacts here that belong to part of the Union re uh, repel of the, uh, of the Confederate Pickett's Charge anyways. Now, so here to greet our Tennesseans that you guys just uh, just followed for all nearly a mile of that walk, which by the way, Chris, I'm super impressed, man, with that heavy pack and all the water made it all the way across that uh that field and that's that's your first hand experience there but here to greet the uh here to greet the uh those tennesseans is the batter is battery i second united states artillery now uh throughout the battle through pickett's charge you have battery i second u.s artillery which is commanded by uh lieutenant george augustus woodruff uh, George Woodruff was actually the commander of the battery. He was a lieutenant and a uh, class of May of 1861 graduate. Now, this holster that we have here is uh, it belonged to uh, George Woodruff, and it was present here during Pickett's Charge. Now, this uh, this holster is accompanied by his uh, his revolver that went with it. Uh, however, the revolver is in the collections and on display currently at the West Point Museum. So for those of you that come up to visit us, sorry guys, it's a little windy. So for those of us, those of you that come up to visit us, I highly encourage you. You can see uh, Lieutenant Woodruff's revolver. Now, there's the accompanying story. So when we first put it on display, we noticed that and so it was a little dirty. The cylinders were dirty. Now we, we like to speculate, we can speculate that it probably has not been fired since uh, Lieutenant, uh, Lieutenant Woodruff was mortally wounded during Pickett's charge. So we can actually speculate that uh, that was very much so the, uh, the remnants of the black powder from when, and rightfully so, Lieutenant, uh, Lieutenant Woodruff emptied his revolver into the advancing Tennesseans. Now, he was replaced by his second in command, a Lieutenant Tully McRae. So this McRae, class of 1862, so he was one of the youngest graduates to hold a command here during the Battle of Gettysburg. Now, he's going to take command when, when, Lieutenant, uh, when Lieutenant Woodruff is wounded, mortally wounded on the field, and he's going to command the battery for the rest of the battle. Now, Lieutenant McRae, it should be noted, very interesting individual, class of 62, and he was from Natchez, Mississippi, but at a time when his comrades, his fellow statesmen were uh, resigning their appointments to the military academy when his comrades were resigning from the U.S. Army in the spring of 1861, Tully McRae chose to remain loyal to the Union. So he was from Natchez, Mississippi. So you don't get a whole lot further south than Natchez, Mississippi. Now, Tully McRae actually served in the U.S. Army from 1862, and he retired in 1903 as a brigadier general. So we're very, uh, we're very happy to have recently come into possession of Lieutenant McRae's cadet coat. So, or should I say, General McRae's cadet coat? So it is very well preserved. It was kept in a uh, cedar chest that bears his name for many, many years, and it's in almost pristine condition to this day. It's just beautiful. I just want to ask you, Aaron, you know, these items at the West Point Museum, they sort of form the triangle. We've got the place, we've got the accounts, mm -hmm. but then you've got the stuff. Why is it important to sort of, and what does it do for us to inter interact with and engage with something, especially it coming back in the case of the holster for the, mm -hmm. probably the first time since the Civil War? Oh yeah, well it forms, it forms a tangible connection to the battle. So you've got that memory, you've got the tangible connection, and it really kind of personalizes in a way, not just the battle, but the history. So you're really able to get intimate with the artifacts and with the battle rather than here's, uh, here's several thousand troops making a mile long charge across an open field and then getting repulsed. It becomes Lieutenant, Lieutenant Tully, Tully McRae and his battery repulsed a uh, several thousand of the uh, the Tennesseans or General Webb and his uh, his brigade are uh, helping repulse the attack on the southern end of the the copse of trees. So, 
Uh, speaking of the uh, the Cops of Trees and General Webb, one of our other prized possessions here that we do have in the, the collections of the West Point Museum is a cane that Brigadier General Alexander Webb. Now, many of you that stopped by the Adams County Historical Society yesterday got to see his Medal of Honor. You got to see this particular object. Now, this the this cane was fastened for the was uh, was was built for General Webb. Uh, out of a Confederate flagstaff, and it's inscribed uh, to General Webb uh, from the uh, the troops of his brigade, and it is of Pickett's most advanced regiment. So, uh, what regiment that is exactly, we uh, we don't have written on there. We can only speculate, but we do know that it came from the flagstaff of a captured Confederate flag on Alexander Webb's front. So, and then this cane was fastened out of that, uh, was fastened out of that flagstaff and given to uh, General Webb after the battle as a prized possession, which he carried with him throughout the remainder of his life. And we ended up getting in our collections uh, relatively recently. So, Gary, I think I'll, uh, actually, I'm sorry, I'm gonna go ahead and turn it over to Chris, who's who's got some other stuff for you. I just wanted to point out a couple uh, quick things. Number one, Webb's a Medal of Honor recipient here for his actions at the high watermark. Um, two, I love the, the holster here. Um, if you look closely towards it, you can see the ghost mark of his gun. Yes. So these were not created uh, specifically for the guns, obviously you would have a 44 uh, revolver in there and over the years with it being in there tight and the, the leather will tighten over time and go away uh, or, or release depending on where you're on the weather, it actually, you can see the cylinder and you can see the cylinder lock there that will hold it, hold the gun together because it's a, a Navy revolver. Over here, you can also see potentially, try to get out of the light, the, um, uh, carved in there the initials and you can see the W pretty clearly um, of Woodruff.